The following is a presentation of the Four Center podcast feed. does my life go i'll tell you how my life goes i tell myself change that intro edit a new photo and then uh, we go live and i forget that's me i'm ken napsuck <laughs> this is other center questions of the other variety and we're live that is right as you can tell we want to guarantee that you know we're live by having something go wrong at the beginning of every stream <laughs> i think ken has done it on purpose anyway i'm joseph grimshaw very happy to be here and I'm Jennifer Landa, and I'm happy to be here as well. <laughs> it's a competition. <laughs> it's going to hold up a newspaper from today's date. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you make. I, I've been doing doing so good at making lists in my life. Uh, more and more that I don't ignore and can't ignore. And I've got to add fix live intro for, for center to that list. <laughs> Be sure right. to do it in like really uh, shaky handwriting. So you're not sure uh, what it meant. But, <laughs> it uh, you know, we, we were poking fun at Ken. But I, I was uh, really the reason that we're running late because I uh, needed to grab my cape to match the, uh, the thumbnail that you do have. Yeah, uh, yeah. And my beer. I was running late on getting a cape and a beer. I was mad at myself for running late and grumbling like you do. I got to get my cape and my beer. Then I realized a cape and a beer is nothing to grumble about. A cape and a beer. It's good comedy <laughs> album title. Good uh, rock album title. Uh, we are here live today uh, hanging out with all of you. It's Other Center. Questions of other varieties, we said. And we take your live comments and we talk about them and we don't uh, address the Space Saga show yet, yet, getting close. And we'll talk mm -hmm. about that up top as well. But part of the conversation, uh, like we said, is your comments. And part of that is your super chats uh, and your super thanks. We do appreciate those. And, and Joseph, we're, we're being honest when we say all are invited. But when we see the bright colors, our eyes do go to them. Oh, yes, absolutely. Bright colors are amazing uh, for making eye movement happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like that. Like that. And speaking yeah. of bright colors, uh, she is uh, the wonderful, talented journalist and documentary filmmaker in, 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 in training, so to speak. Actually, she's already got the skills. Uh, uh, Jennifer Landa, your Lisa Frank uh, docu-series that you've launched on your own YouTube channel is just wonderful. Bright colors indeed. Uh, so glad you're with her, here with us today. Thank you so much. I've been having a lot of fun. I have a new uh, Lisa Frank video coming up soon. I can't stop talking about it. It's just when I think one drama is done, a new one unfolds. So it's yeah, it's a it's a lot. Technicolor <laughs> drama is what I'm calling it. Ooh, that's a you gotta sell this. Is I know there's I know there's always. Every once in a while, it's kind of like when Hollywood, uh, you know, uh, hey, we're gonna have a bunch of asteroid coming to Earth films documentaries get like there's like a you know people get a little popular ideas i don't care if there's other ducks i want your duck i want technicolor drama the lisa frank story of jen landa on a full-fledged uh hbo films type of doc thing be my cool. eyes are already going to it like it's a bright super jet <laughs> <laughs> i really enjoyed your uh your blowing on the old nes cartridge video mm. that was great thank and you i don't know if there's any intersection there if lisa frank ever made an nes <laughs> video but that would no be not not that i know of yet but i feel like i've become a retro investigative journalist mm. which is not a thing but i'm making it a thing and i want to find out the hard-hitting questions of who blew on the nes cartridge first that's what i want to know <laughs> oh, it was great yeah. <laughs> i mean that was it was oh, whoops i hit the wrong button but we will get to that questions uh thank you for the <laughs> few of you who have sent in some uh really wonderfully bizarre questions uh, I love so love that about your your video. I was just enjoying it as the you know weird fun nostalgia thing that we all talk about in the days before. Like you know now when its trend starts, you know you can track it down to. This was the first person who tweeted it, and then it right. became a thing. But right. for like that, we all knew across the coast to coast, at least in America, blow on the cartridge, and we mm. don't know how. So I, I was uh, just enjoying the fun of it. And I was so happy that it became suddenly investigative and you had some yeah. theories about where the blowing came from. It's really I still I could not find any answers. And I thought that surely someone somewhere could say I did it first or, my, you know, I knew somebody who was a game person. No, nothing. So 
let us know if you where and when you heard about that rumor. It, it was the early version of the internet, which was just someone's older brother, sister, or cousin <laughs> said. Yeah. And then there was a chain of those until yep. we all believed it to be true. <laughs> uh, Brian Ward's here. Um, do you all remember the first time you were told that or told someone else? Maybe, I don't know, maybe Joseph's uh, the, the center of the information in his community. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I just remember sitting with my friend Sean. We were playing like double dribble and bases loaded and something was working and he just said, well, blow on it. And I did, what? Like, I had a Commodore 64. You didn't, you didn't blow on anything on the Commodore 64. I remember that moment. What a seminal moment in, in, in the lives of an 80s kid. 89, 84M said, I used to blow on carts, but as a computer person, now I'm in pain at what it does to the circuits. LOL. I was, uh, when I was working on my short uh, film this summer, I was desperate to re-record something with my Zoom, and it was not reading the SD card. And at like 2 a.m. in desperation, I blew so hard into the Zoom's little SD card hole, and it worked. It worked. See? That's why maybe, we did it. Maybe it was the power of it. Maybe it was I, you know, jiggled it, but now I'm convinced that it was indeed the blowing mm, <laughs> and, mm. uh, so there you go i think retro investigative journalist is a thing jen because you are that thing and you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna make i it. am that thing that's right uh mm. a couple of quick orders of business before we get to uh, any other questions uh one i'm very curious uh if ken and jennifer if you are enjoying anything to to drink on this live stream alcoholic or otherwise no, yes, uh, I'm still sticking with the uh, well, it's truly brand, but some uh, hard seltzer because it is early afternoon. and I do have a comedy show after this, so I usually get drunk at the comedy club, not before. So I'm <laughs> pacing, myself, pacing, pacing, pacing. Uh, I have a, a pumpkin flavored beer Ooh. to go with my cape that has an angry owl. Oh, as, the, uh, yeah, yeah. as the logo, which I really like because it's like the owl is there ready to attack anybody who's going to make fun of uh, pumpkin flavoring in the general pumpkin season. <laughs> that owl's coming for you. I'm a sucker for all things pumpkin. I have nothing. <laughs> I, I realize that now. I had a smoothie a little while ago. Uh, my, uh, what do I put in it? Uh, spirulina. So it makes it nice and green. Um, mm. But now I have nothing. I feel left yeah. out. Uh, I mean, look, you've got you got more responsibilities than us today. I got I got eight minutes at a comedy club. You got two kids that don't need mom home drinking it too in the afternoon quite yet. You know, I'd be terrified of those eight minutes at a comedy club. Oh, my gosh. My hands are sweating just thinking about it. Oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Maybe you I got should. eight minutes of Lisa Frank and uh, Nintendo cartridge material. <laughs> You're fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is so funny. Can we read that that green one? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, let's dive in. Let's get there. We got uh, we got Anakin Crescent with a super chat. Baby Jabba. Actually, Jen, you read this one. <laughs> Baby Jabba to the boogie. To bang bang to boogie. Does this have any meaning to you? Yes, it does. Oh, I'm so I'm embarrassed and delighted. <laughs> That's a an old rap that I did to uh, it was called Star Wars Delight to the song Rapper's yes. Delight. Mm. And I rapped about Baby Jabba. I uh, thought this was literally from the Clone Wars movie and I had forgotten, but it's from the mind of Jennifer Landa. No, not from the mind of George Lucas, from the mind of Landa. A weird universe. From the twisted mind of Jennifer Landa comes Boogie da Bang Bang Java Baby. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I remember that video. I remember, I remember the early Landa catalog. Oh my God. You know, this is fun. Thank there. you, thank you. Yeah, you have, you have a lot of music stuff out there, Jen, on your channel. The dancing we've talked about in, in, in train stations and, and beaches and whatnot, but you, you, you put even, even early four center days, right? You had some music videos going. I, I think I did. Yeah, I think I, I stopped after having children, and it occurred to me recently, I was like, oh, when they get to be older and their friends know about me being online, are they going to use this against her? Is my baby Jabba rapping going to be weaponized <laughs> against my daughter? I don't know. I might have to put that video on private. That must be happening already, right? Like of how online was your mom? <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, I'm pretty tame. I feel, as, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, yeah. more in the yeah. nerdy side of things. Yeah, not nah, look. I, 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 that's a good question. What you might face is what what will come back later that uh, will be out there for for your kids to see on this internet that is forever. I, I you know, we'll, we're already we've already crossed that in some situation. <laughs> Uh, we never dealt with that before. We didn't have to grow up. You know, it was, it was 
uh, you know, hi eight tapes in the back of a of a storage closet. That, that was the internet that, that we had, so we didn't have to worry about that stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we only existed maybe playing in the park when a relative visited. Besides that, <laughs> no video footage whatsoever. Did we? Did we really exist? We really yes. exist? Um, before we dive into some questions, I, it, it's a good chance, Joseph, maybe to catch up and Jen uh, to catch up with the the big issue of the day, the housekeeping. Uh, we're very happy that the WGA strike uh, has uh, come to an end. Uh, a very great agreement. Uh, you know, these these uh, going out on strike, it kind of worked when you're disruptive like this, and uh, you can get the the attention of those in power. It worked, uh, but. We are still uh, honoring the SAG after strike and those guidelines, which were actually the more specific guidelines that kind of uh, brought other center into existence, if you will. So a lot of people have been posting comments and, hey, when you coming back, uh, we, we don't quite know, uh, but we are excited to return. And, and Joseph, it's fair to say we're formulating an, a, an attack pattern Delta Go Now plan. <laughs> yes, I think we have plans uh, inside plans because we had a whole plan leading up to uh, Ahsoka and we're discussing how we want to cover it. Uh, different people mm -hmm. are um, asking if we're going to do episode by episode. Uh, there's a nice, a lovely conversation on our YouTube channel under one of our videos, uh, people wanting episode by episode. Uh, what we're well, we'll uh, we'll see what we're going to do. <laughs> we have, <laughs> we have fun. But we are discussing how we want to go about uh about discussing Ahsoka because it is really different uh, now that it is all uh, complete. Uh, and definitely uh, we won't uh, leave any of the nuances or any of the great character moments or connections. We, we will not leave them uncovered. We just got to figure out the best way to, um, to go about structuring it all uh, yeah. since this is a new experience to do it after the fact uh, when all the, the questions that come up episode by episode are way in the rear view mirror mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah there might be an episode completely um uh, uh, de devoted to us just looking at all the theories emerging and going what what no come on what are you crazy no no i it's mean it is out. tempting to try to uh discuss every episode as though we have not seen <laughs> the next episode but then it kind of <laughs> turns it into a comedy bit uh, mm. What do you think? Do you think X is going to show up? Like, uh, <laughs> here's my wild theory of Balin's skull. Yeah. Do you think this really tiny thing in the background from a video game has anything to do with anything <laughs> going forward? It does not. It does I'm not. telling you, Cal Kestis in the fifth episode. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Uh, there we go. So, anyways, that's the update. And yeah, Rick Villanueva says out there. Uh, uh, Union Strong. Yes, about Star Wars book reviews as well. Uh, that's part of the uh, uh, looking at what we get to. Uh, I have, um, I, yeah, I've just, I haven't read any Star Wars books in about a year. Well, I was in the middle of one of them, but uh, um, we'll we'll get there too. We'll, we'll let you all know. We'll keep you all updated. Yeah, absolutely. And we do have another question that relates to this all from the Cali Kid. Does Jen have any inside info on the SAG strike? Uh, no, I don't. But it is funny how rumors, you kind of hear rumblings and they kind of come true because there were some rumors that the WGA strike was going to be over by October. That uh, kind of lines up. I will say, don't listen to the trades deadline. Any of those people, uh, SAG is going to be the one that's going to say what's happening. And I know that they're meeting, I think, either Monday or Tuesday of this coming week. And then they might just be kind of quiet. And that's okay. <laughs> we want them to be quiet. They're going to negotiate. I'm sure we'll get a good deal just like like the writers did because their deal is pretty exceptional. Yeah, yeah I think the writers uh, deal is dealing with some of the same stuff as SAG in the same ballpark. Other right. stuff is unique to SAG. So I think on the, on the uh, joint topics where the WJ has already made progress, that's great. And then why would a powerful union like SAG bend after the writers? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, uh, uh, some of us uh, had been having the opinion in the theory and the speculating early on around June that the producers had already lost. And the question was, how long would it take for them to admit they lost? Mm -hmm. And the answer for the writers was five months. Mm -hmm. And now we have the same question. They've already lost to sag after the, the question is, when will they admit it? Right. Yeah. 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 I love this. It's been a fascinating. I don't love the strikes, but it's been fascinating to watch it all play out play out on social media in a way that it didn't play out in 2007 and eight. And just when you start hearing things of, well, the fourth quarter of the business year is coming up and they better start coming back to the table. And sure enough, that's what exactly uh, kind of happened. So it's been mm -hmm. an interesting, challenging, but interesting ride. Yeah. And, and thank you everyone who is excited to hear about uh, uh, 
uh, Ahsoka uh, thoughts and book reviews and everything. I think we'll definitely uh, keep some amount or kind of other center uh, uh, material uh, coming as well. But uh, we got a talking plan and all that. Yeah, yeah, and I got to yeah, tell you, it's been fun. Uh, other center's been um, uh, it was a, it was a bit of a risk and a, and, a, and a step forward that we weren't sure we were going to be able to take and. And we did, and and you're all out there who stayed with us and stayed ded dedicated have, have made it one of my favorite things to do of just uh, experiencing things and 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 learning these these land of revelations we keep joking mm -hmm. about, uh, but down to the fact that you know it turns out Jen and I probably were in the same Sunday school class together. It's it's like we could, we we got down to those details. It's wild. It's wild, and it also it's kind of gives me an explanation about why all three of us have come together and why we've been together uh for so long is because we we have a lot of not only the same values but sim similarities in our childhoods it's really mm -hmm. it's kind of fascinating it's like a magnet pulled us yeah. together <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. the star wars magnet my husband's uh, chiming <laughs> in the background <laughs> uh well let's uh we get uh, some questions here uh what do we got here uh, th this is uh i saw this too I, I i think joseph you starred this one and i i thought oh are we gonna need to block this comment no i don't i don't think we do this is i just it's a it's a username that is uh that, that's uh, uh makes my eyes pop uh, uh brent bum bum standing by with a great <laughs> user photo there love that name I have something stuck in my uh, it, it stuck in between my back teeth and a round of floss. What the hell <laughs> do I do now for center? Um, um, there's a lot of ways to tackle this. One of them might be for me <laughs> is to take a drink like this and just do a big swig and a and a swish and see what happens from there. That's mm -hmm. step one for me. Oh, yeah, I would start awesome. with a with a swish uh water if you want to be gentle uh maybe a more uh, maybe whiskey if you want to be more powerful and wasteful yeah uh and then the next step i think would be to wait about six months and grow out your fingernails and <laughs> just use the tools that nature has provided yeah yeah. I actually, my mother was dating this man who I hated. <laughs> he had something stuck in his teeth. He took out his <laughs> business card and went in there like that with the corner of the oh, business yeah. card. And I, it was in that moment. I was like, mom, you, you cannot, you just cannot. Yeah. <sighs> that yeah. used to be a thing, right? That, that people would business use their card. business cards. Oh, Really? Because I've seen that before. Of like that's that's like a known tool, right? Like if you've had a business lunch, then you're like, Rrr. now did he did he throw out the the business card or did he like put it back in his wallet to hand out? I think because it was in the car. I think he just <laughs> threw it. He just uh, threw it there. Uh, but now uh, that I know that you know it's been done before, well maybe it wasn't so so odd. <laughs> that's why toothpicks were popular at like restaurants and stuff, right? They would they'd yeah. have little toothpicks there. Neil asked that. Do you have any toothpicks? We got some great advice from eight nine eight four M sewing uh, sewing string. Mm. If you're really desperate, Ooh, I like that. Yeah, yeah a toothbrush. If you're good at math, work it out with a pencil. Um, yeah, I hate that feeling too. Where <laughs> it, it, you know we're talking about the back back. I, I know that I know the feeling here, Brent uh, Bum Bum standing by. Uh, where uh, you know you're out, you know you're at a green room at a comedy club, going, oh god, I know it's there, I know it's there, and I can't get to the bathroom. What am I going to do? And, and it just eats at you. It, it the whole night, you feel it, you feel it. No toothpick will get there. No dental insurance plan will will come up in time for you to fix it, and it, it's a it drives me crazy. <laughs> These are the important questions that Other Center was born to answer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, uh, love that, love that. Uh, oh my gosh, Brent Dad so follows up to his own question. Toothpicks are for aesthetics only. I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with that. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, Rick points out Cad Bane loves a toothpick. I, I, I think toothpicks more are more effective for a photo shoot than they are actually at getting. Uh, they're anything. they're great to increase your accuracy with a with a ranged weapon. Now, Ken, mm -hmm. I got a I got an important question for you. Uh, yeah. You, you, the the username here, Brent Bum, standing by. Yep. You have been saying Brent Bum Bums. <laughs> you, do you know Brent from another world, or did you simply add a Bum Bums like it's a forgotten child from the fence? No, it, it's uh, it's an in-house phrase. Okay, here. So uh, it's just when I see Bum, it's gonna be uh, Brent's Bum Bum standing by, and uh, it be, works okay, for I was, and it works for user day. <laughs> Good to Brent know. Bum Bums. Now there's know. like very New Yorker kind of thing. Hey, Brent Bum Bums, what's going on? 
Yeah, you go down to the store, see Brady Bum Bum. Yeah, yeah. Did you hear about that guy Jennifer's mom used to date and clean his teeth with a business card? What a bum bum. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Oh my We're off and running. This exactly. Joseph, you're right. This is why other center was born. The important question. So funny. A water pick will change uh, your life. This is true. A water pick will change your life. My roommate, my old roommate back in the day had one. And I was like, oh, I'd like to get one. Do you know the setup, the, the counter space you have to clear for like a water pick or one of them like high fluting toothbrushes? Like I have a quip. It just you put in a double A and it vibrates. My, my friend had a, like, it, was like a thing. it was a giant thing. You got to like fill up with water. Yeah. Too yeah. much. Too much. That's a lot. Mm, mm, mm. 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 No. Mm. Mm. Oh, my gosh. It's All right. All right. Ratchet. Okay. Well, sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my no. eyes have gone to a color. Oh, oh pop up that. Oh, color. oh, Mr. Back Ken Plume. Color, dream from our pal Ken Plume. Uh, it is amazing that as we stream that you and Ken Plume are not playing Fortnite right now. I appreciate uh, yeah. you both taking a break to do this. It's it's been tough. We we got two wins last night. Uh, uh, Ken and I are always down to crown, as it were, in the Fortnite world. And uh, I'm I'm going to be out at the comedy show tonight. Ken's going to play by himself. Maybe Brian Ward mm. will play with him. I don't know. It's a, it's mm. a tough night for Ken playing alone. <laughs> uh, Ken asks, so what are Jennifer's favorite holidays? An excellent plug uh, for the Q's episode we recorded this week. Uh, Jen was not able to join us for the Q's, and one of our Q's was uh, naming our three favorite holidays. So uh, Jennifer, where do you go with this? I would say two. So number one is Christmas. I love Christmas. I, I'm not much, as we know, I'm not into cold, right? I'm not into snow, but I am, I like a chill. I like to have a warm coffee, maybe some mittens, the Christmas music. I listen to Christmas music starting in like November all the way to January. My kids are like, <laughs> enough, enough Michael wow. Buble <laughs> Christmas album. Um, so that's yes, definitely Christmas. I love <laughs> decorating all that stuff. And then my second one is Halloween. And I, I'm really getting into it. I think because as Ken and I have shared, like I, we were not, we didn't, weren't really into Halloween as kids. I wasn't really allowed. I can only trick or treat at the mall, which is not that fun. Um, so yeah, I'm into it now making costumes. I want to make some decorations. Uh, I think I'm gonna have a spirited away. Oops. I'm, I'm plugging that spirited away theme this year. Yeah. So Ooh, ooh yeah. yeah. There's a little, uh, a little yeah. plug. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to hear the, the preview of spooky season. Cause that's what we're talking about for our uh, main show, our deep dive is our history uh, with the spooky season back in the past in our youth and going up to the current day and perhaps even the spooky future. Yes. <laughs> I, hope, I hope the future isn't spooky. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. What, same thing. Wasn't allowed to trick or treat because of Satan, of course, naturally. But uh, uh, I, it's weird that, yeah, Jen, you're going the opposite direction of me. As we discussed in this past week, Joseph and I, uh, I just, I just never got into it. Never got into it. Mm. I don't know. But the Christmas music thing that, that uh, I want to talk about that. You're the one like, you're the one. Like, I don't know a lot of pro Christmas music people. I, I like a good Christmas tune, some especially the somber, more depressing ones. Mm. Uh, um, I like rock. I do like some rock ones. Uh, Pretenders, 2000 Miles. Tom Petty had a good one. You two had a good cover. Um, so I can get behind it. But you you're into it. What are, what are some of your favorites? What pulls you in? Oh, I love Barbara Streisand, Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell, Jingle, all the way that one. I love anything Frank Sinatra. Harry Connick Jr. has a great Christmas album that I've listened to for, bra I mean, way too, like 15, 20 years. Um, <laughs> yeah, I love it all. And then you get to bust out the movies, right? All the classics, Home right. Alone. My kids are getting into that. Um, so it's just, it's just fun. It feels very cozy, even though we're in Los Angeles and it doesn't get that cold. It's just the right amount of cold for me. Yeah. yeah, there's just there's a lot of great uh, Christmas music that I think now we kind of just sort of consider it its own weird little genre. Mm -hmm. But at the time with with, uh, uh, you know, White Christmas, uh, Bing Crosby, Frank Snatcher, Ella Fitzgerald, Sammy Davis Jr., Mel Torme. Mel Torme is oh, uh, Mel out Torme. there writing them. He's like, it's not enough to sing it. I'm going a, I'm to a write one and I'm going to oh, make yeah. it famous. That was all contemporary music. My favorite uh, Christmas album is uh, Sinatra's from like 54, right when he was a. Uh, uh, his, on his resurgence yes his second mm -hmm. burst of fame and the first side is these newfangled songs and it is like you know <laughs> uh, jingle bell and and things like that and then the uh the b side is the old classics so i think we've kind of lost that perspective that they were hot and hip and new and music mm. of the day and of the era when they were created and we don't have as much of that i mean mariah carey is is doing her best to make music modern with her <laughs> 
25 year old song her christmas music i wish we had just far more totally modern whatever genre or style you already work in you're Mm -hmm. putting out a song like that that happens to be about christmas that would be awesome this is a this is a fascinating discussion that maybe we'll revisit as the season uh, approaches here. Uh, like I said, I, I don't necessarily have a negative reaction, but I just know a lot of people do when you hear it in the stores. So there's a, so much attached to it. But I'm like with you when I back in the early radio days of, of my career, like every December, we would switch to uh, mostly Christmas rock music. And I thought it was really fun. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't want to hear it 12 months a year. Of course, that's not the point. So, Joseph, I'm with you. Can we? Can we, uh, you know, a new set of Christmas standards from from Lady Gaga and Taylor Swift and, uh, you know, <laughs> anyone else you want to throw in there? I, I, I think I'd be on board. Whether or not I listen to it all the time doesn't matter. But the mm. spirit of what you're talking about, it, it's uh, it's interesting. It's, it, it bears a, a deeper conversation. Man. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we're getting some votes for the, the more melancholy ones. I like those two. Blue yeah. Christmas, beautiful, mm. sad, lonely, yep. love it. Um, Rat Pack Christmas music is the only Christmas music, says Frankie. Uh, <laughs> connecting with Joseph there. Thank you, thank you, Frankie. And and here's one we used to play all the time, and it and it's long. It would be I'd like I liked it, but it was a bathroom break song for, as a DJ, and that is what Car- Kyle Harlow is suggesting. Springsteen's "Gravelly Santa Claus is Coming to Town," because Clarence Clements breaks it down for a long time in that song. Santa is coming to town for a while in that song. <laughs> like, Great, I'm running to the bathroom, but uh, yeah, that's a that's a good version too. Like the final countdown of uh, of Christmas songs. If you want to torture yourself, listen to the song "Final Countdown" and and count <laughs> how many times they say it is the final countdown before it bleeping yeah. ends. It's a real lie. <laughs> Oh, look at this. Addy corrects me right away. Uh, Taylor Swift has released some original Christmas songs in recent years. You know, oh. I, I, I like I like T Swift. I'm not, I'm not a full uh, full on Swifty, uh, but uh, you know, I'd I'd love for her to wear a Force Center jersey and, and boost our sales 400. Uh, percent I'm gonna check that out there. Addy has a follow up question though, and I this is gonna spin into a question for Joseph and his uh, Minnesotan upbringing here. Where was it mm. there? Trick or treat at the mall? Question mark. Mm. I thought this was this was definitely something that uh, I didn't deal with as a kid, but I dealt with as a security director at the mall. That was what we did every year. We had cr- trick or treating at the mall. All the stores would give out give out candy. Jen clearly, maybe Costa Mesa Mall. You experienced it, Joseph. The Mall of America. There got to be something there, right? I know you spent all your uh, days. There. Well, there is uh, there. I'm sure there is stuff at the Mall of America now, but the Mall of America wasn't there when I was a kid. That was oh. uh, completed in 92, uh, yeah. just in time for me to see my second showing of Twin Peaks Fire Walk with me at America's Mall, which I really enjoyed the dissonance oh. there. Um, uh, but I don't think. Well, I wasn't aware of it, I should say. I wasn't aware of it. Uh, my parents were weird, as I've mentioned uh, before. <laughs> they just. <laughs> didn't do things that normal people did. And sometimes when I ask them, hey, why didn't we do that normal thing? They're just like, don't know, don't remember. Just didn't want to, didn't occur to us. Every once in a while it was money. Uh, so there, it might have been uh, uh, trick-or-treating at the mall. The one closest to us was the Brookdale Mall, uh, hmm. which has now been uh, dozed and destroyed. But it was still, I think that would have been weird at the time because malls were for teenagers to hang out, you know, right. but uh trick-or-treating eh. I, you know what i also think like it wasn't the same era we're in now where every corporation is trying to pretend to be your friend mm. <laughs> and yeah, to yeah, me yeah. it was sort of like we're we're b dalton's buy our books or get the hell out or like we're sears <laughs> we're for washing machines mm. we're not giving you a snickers bar get out of here like i don't know i think it's just kind of a different time too but maybe it was going on and i knew nothing about it it's curious just yeah wondering yeah yeah, it was it was a, it was a safe way to do it there. And Jen, you have support. Not that you, you weren't supported before, but both Hal Lovell and Isis Kim Plumer were Jennifer on the Christmas music. And so maybe we need to get you booked on. We got this covered on what is the best Christmas song of all time. Oh, big, wow. big ass. But there you go. Mm. That's a good question. Yeah, <laughs> huge. Well, Ken, my eye is going to colors again uh, in this oh, episode. Man. <laughs> with a, a great uh, user photo there uh <laughs> annie sander uh it is a, delightful to see the euro sign uh delighted to see you're already making plans for ahsoka coverage but i absolutely love the beautiful madness of other center and i hope it will stay alive somehow much love to the whole gang uh i said question because i just saw the bright color and i didn't read through to the end it's a statement uh <laughs> thank you annie for the very very kind statement yeah, making plans. But yeah, it's been wonderful madness. Wonderful madness. I mean, you know, in one episode, we discussed cheese and holidays and the meaning of life. Like, 
That's, mm. that's what it's all about. In some ways, that's what I've really been enjoying the most. We have talked about some heavy topics and we've done some deep dives that are that are, you know, pretty focused on, you know, some meaningful topics. Uh, but I've really been delighted with the questions that have been coming in for the the cues of the other episodes that do just swing absolutely wildly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, name yeah. an animal you like to uh, please tell us about your experiences on one of the nation's, uh, you know, deepest yeah. tragedies. Like, okay, we can do both yeah. in one episode. Yeah. Uh, that's been really, really fun uh, to to stretch like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, we've got some great questions coming in. Jen, anything jump out to you? Let us know. Okay. As we dig through some fun ones. Fun ones indeed. Uh while Jen's looking, I'll say Cali Kid says the other center is the brother of Fourth Center. Yeah, it's in the family. It, it's a it's an awkward Christmas uh, dinner, but uh, <laughs> the weird the weird uh uncle or aunt at the yeah. party. <laughs> oh, other centers here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but they've got some crazy stories to tell. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Alvin and the Chipmunks Christmas. Oh, mm -hmm. I loved that. Oh, I yeah, still well, listen yeah. to that. Alvin and Chipmunks. Uh, I'm a big, uh, is a Muppet kid like so many out there. And I know Ken Plume as well, but like John Denver doing 12 Days of Christmas with the Muppets is near and dear to my heart. Yeah. I'm not a Grinch. I'm not a Grinch. I like Christmas. Um, <laughs> here's another there's another color i can't select it okay you can't select it uh this mm -hmm. one yeah okay eight nine eight four thanks for the super chat love to support the pod through hard times <laughs> hard times i'm thinking of the dusty roads promo i believe the sacrifice you made will all build towards a stronger future i we would not talk about some other time i think that's true for mm -hmm. a question as a spice head oh no uh what is the spiciest Ooh. food that you like my dad is a spice head a hot mm. sauce guy to the point where his doctor has told him stop and my dad refuses he's eaten away the lining of his throat <laughs> in places because of hot sauce wouldn't it be um, great if you just ate too much hot sauce and and you you did just burst into flames like <laughs> if you could choose like i don't care this is this is how i want to go i'm going to mm -hmm. keep eating hot sauce until i just burst into flames yeah, oh uh, it'd be a good, good horror film plot. Yeah, maybe maybe your next short film, Joseph, that could be a feature. <laughs> do that. Do that. Ken's dad bursts into flames. That's a great <laughs> a great title for a short film. Uh, Jed, I'm going to start with you because uh, you know uh, we like those land of revelations, spicy food. Uh, what's your limit? What do you oh. go to? Mm. Do you burn the lining of your throat out with hot sauce. I do. I, I don't know my limits. Well, I, I find out my limits a little too late, <laughs> but I, I, can we share, remember, the chips and salsa? That's where I really find that I start to dabble with how, how hot can I go? Because sauce can be very mm. mild. Usually it's pretty mild when you're at the restaurant. But when you make your own, I have accidentally made it a little too hot to where you know I'm sweating, my guests are sweating, but you still go back for more. I don't know what that feeling is, but I'm always chasing, I'm chasing that high. So uh, yeah, salsa definitely, I, I put salsa on everything. I put hot sauce in everything, my salads, every type of food, even much to my family's, my in-laws, I'll be like, um, do you have any hot sauce? Which I don't mean to insult their cooking, but I just need that spice. Right. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any yeah. real hot sauce? Um, I don't. Uh, I'm trying to think of the right way to to ask this, because um, I don't. I, I don't need to descend into uh, 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 lengthy bathroom discussions. Oh, but like for me, there is that the the difference between what is really hot in your mouth versus what has an adverse effect later on. Mm -hmm. Is that a thing for you, Jennifer, or <laughs> can you no. go as hot as you want? It's not. It's okay. not. I've heard of Good this this thing that happens to people. I think it really does depend on maybe your body, your stomach. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe because I've I've trained myself. I yeah, no, I have no problems. I mean, if if it gets really hot in my mouth, I'll just have a little bit of milk. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, no. No. Okay. Good to know. I'm glad we yeah. worked this out live on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> but I've heard of that and I'm like, what is what is that? Like <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what it is, Jen. There's okay. limits. There's limits to what I can do at that table. Oh, wow. uh, and, have you uh, experienced this, Ken, where you have you have pushed I, your mouth beyond its limits and the rest of your body followed? I I have inherited this from my mother. Mm. Uh, we uh, and I like the spicy. I think I my my dad uh, you know uh, loves the spicy, so I do like a kick in the mouth. 
But I am um, partnered with someone who was raised uh, for a while in southern Arizona. So she kind of she can down a jalapeno, jalapeno like it's an apple. Right. Like mm -hmm. she, you know, mm -hmm. stuff. So she's always, you know, I'll say teasing as the as the polite word. She's always trying to, you know, point out that I'm not as good with it. It's not that I don't like it. Like if I'm sitting out for chips and salsa, I, you know, I don't want to be at war with my food, but I like to like it to slap me a little bit. Everyone's <laughs> right. And, and I'm good with it. But yeah, after. Yeah, you just you got to you got to. You gotta you gotta hold out for, for a better tomorrow sometimes, and I can't because I can't go spicy all the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I in in general, uh, I mm -hmm. I have to order things uh, mild to medium because my body is just not built that way. But I do like to push it because I love the the taste and the flavor. Mm -hmm. uh, for a while, my wife was making these uh, wonderful uh, enchiladas, um, and. <laughs> I think she kind of knew, but she didn't really know how bad it was that, you know, when she put the spice in, she just got distracted and put in maybe triple to what she normally did. <gasps> we took the first bites and it was just like, <laughs> like absolute cartoon steam eyeballs, oh but it was delicious and amazing. And I was like, this is uh, I shouldn't eat this, but I'm going to. Uh, yeah. And that was that was the best uh, spicy meal I've ever had and mm. will not have again. <laughs> yeah, like 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 uh, like a, a Thai food that's maybe got a menu that has the spicy mornings. I might try it out. Some Indian food. Like I, I'm I I there was a place down the street from when I worked at Defy. There was a great Indian restaurant. Uh, my friend Juan would go and I, I I would try to go and I just yeah I just I, it's unfortunate. I, I I wish I could 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 raise the bar, but I, I can't. Mm, yeah, papaya mango salad is from this uh, Thai restaurant we used to go to. So good. Mm. So spicy. Oh my God. And it's so deceiving. It's, co yeah. it's cold, obviously a cold dish and it looks so refreshing and it tastes refreshing. And then I was like dying in the restaurant, but I want to hold it together. So I'm like, can I have some more water, please? Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And he says, just with uh, classic sriracha is more than enough. Yeah, our mm. our fridge, yes, the fridge is full of uh, sriracha, and it, yeah. it ain't mine. Mm. It ain't mine. Yeah, uh, yeah. Brandy's Brandy. backing up here. Sorry. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. No, 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 go for it. Go for it. Uh, I have a chronic illness that means I shouldn't eat spicy food. Uh, oh. I just wanted to point out that I am not alone. <laughs> that not everybody can can take it because it's it's. I think part of the reason that I go on about this is it is one of those weird things where people uh, talk about it just like it's a strength metric. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. can you take it? And like, uh, yeah, I can. I, I, you could also break my arm with a baseball bat. I could take that. <laughs> right. But do I bleep and want to on yeah. purpose? No, no. no. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I was going to this this uh, comment from Bradley. Uh, you know, I don't know if the names related to the conversation. <laughs> 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 Everybody, Everybody Is that fun one name today? Uh, uh, an uncanny like Martin Short David <laughs> Bowie combination? For it is, picture? yeah, oh, like a gosh. uncanny Valley Bowie uh, short. Yeah, I love that. That's a good uh, Pepsi. Is, yeah, no, I have, uh, I have, I have all the the high strength ones. I have. They've make they make tums now that that basically feel and taste like candy. So I'm probably gonna have a problem from having too much tums. I'm staring at two bottles right now, and then I have some like. Uh, natural organic stuff that my acupuncture suggested that's supposed to repair and not just to cover up the problem. And it, it hasn't helped. So, uh, you know, uh, I'm with you. I'm with you. It's your friend. Mm. Yeah. Well, we're learning so much about all of our listeners. <laughs> so wonderful. Uh, I do want to show, uh, I believe this is 8984M's uh, question, right? Uh, I mm. love me some roasted peppers smashed with garlic and soy sauce. That sounds delicious. Ooh. And I have been wow. enjoying peppers a lot more uh, recently, uh, adding them to, to dishes. So thanks for the reminder. That sounds delicious. Love that. Love that. Yeah. No, when I, yeah, when I get a deli sandwich, jalapenos go on. Make, does it make me a hero? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe it will. I don't know. Uh, all right. Uh, that was There's Jen. so many good ones. Many good I, Frankie ones. M says, I am the other center of my family. <laughs> 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 so am I. So am I. Matthew awesome. Stokes says, I grow chilies. I love spicy food. It doesn't mean I'm not a dripping, sweating, crying mess after some food, but I still love it. It's beautiful. Oh, uh, love that there. I love that there. Uh, love so many great questions. Thanks for the super chats. Entity, thank you. Super thanks. Comments like this from Ken Bloom. Other center must live on. Other forever and ever. I uh, love all that there. Uh, any question, Joseph, uh, pop out to you. I think you might be up on the rotation here. I yeah, but I, this just popped in from uh, Jared, and I want to be sure to show it and celebrate it. Jared says, oh, I'm sorry to tonight myself. I'm cancer free. That Yay. is amazing, Jared. Uh, that I have had so many loved ones 
who have uh, been down that road. And I have seen, I haven't experienced it myself, but I have seen up close how difficult a, a road it is. And I'm so uh, happy for you. And, and uh, just thank you for sharing. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's important stuff. And um, we're right there with you. Jared's a key part of our four center family here and our other center, other table of the family gathering as well. So <laughs> Uh, in terms of questions here, let me scroll. I got another uh, shiny that my eye went to. Uh, Connie, a wonderful long-time listener supporter. Thank you, Connie. Says, what has been your favorite international trip or stateside trip? Thanks for all you do. I feel like Ken and I have uh, chatted about trips on a Q's episode that maybe Jennifer wasn't with us for. So I want to be sure to start with Jennifer about hmm. your favorite uh, trips that you've taken. One of my favorite trips was, I think it was last year, my family and I went to Italy and my husband had really, we got the opportunity, thanks to my my wonderful uh, in-laws who were like, come on, bring the kids. And I'm like, I don't want to go on a plane ride, 14 hours. Are you crap? My husband was like, trust me, this, you're going to love it there. I'm like, how great. Could oh, and I went and the, the Tuscan countryside and the people and the food. And I've suddenly forgot about that horrible plane trip with my kids who would not sleep <laughs> <laughs> and we were jet lagged for three days it did not matter it was so so <laughs> incredible and unlike anything i had ever experienced before and i was like wow i'm very very grateful to have to have been invited now i want to go back mm. <sighs> mm. and go to and go to london after hearing you guys talk about it because I, I loved london but i didn't experience it as an adult and so mm. now i want to go to a pub Oh, yeah, an old one, a real old one. With a cape and a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Christopher Lee used to do every night in my imagination. Love that. Um, that's great. Yeah, Italy's on my list. Mm -hmm. On my list, now that I've broken the seal of international travel, which it, I can't eat. You know, we, we've talked about a lot about our London trip and, and, and my Paris trip. So um, I'll try to think of a stateside one. But Joseph, mm -hmm. do, you have a, do you have one that pops to mind for you? You're a little more traveling. Yeah. Uh, not not a ton, but um, there's a uh, there's a trip I want to take that Sarah and I were so excited about, and then and then she's like, "Should I look up the price?" And I was like, "No, because it's all right, all right. Let's just look up the price." I'm like, "Yeah, though, and that's not happening anytime soon." Apparently, there is a a train uh, that goes, I think, from Venice to London that is designed to be the romantic old timey train that you would see in a Hitchcock film of like oh. with the dining car and with the wear something nice and actual, like, you know, somewhat roomy is, you know, as much as physics allows uh, bedrooms. And we, we Venice and Lake Como are high on our list of places that we really want to see. We're like, let's just take a train. Oh, Oh, okay. Not yet. <laughs> Maybe a few years uh, from wow. now. Uh, a few <laughs> billion successful podcasts from now, maybe. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah, but uh, I know I've mentioned this before on on, on Four Center, but this it's one that always uh, sticks in my head. Uh, I'll make the story uh, short. The first time that I went to the UK uh, was with uh, the person I dated before I met with my wonderful wife, Sarah. Uh, we're still friends. She's great. But she grew up in uh, the UK because her dad worked on a military base. So she kind of knew it. Her dad was working over there again. She wanted to go visit him. And I got to go to the UK with her. So I was really able to, you know, uh, not have to plan and just say what I wanted to do. I'd also been ordering these not popular at all uh, in America, Doctor Who toys online. These action yeah, figures that were like lower quality than the original Star Wars ones. But this was in like 2002. But it was all the Doctor Who action figures you could get. And on the back, there was a, of the action figure package, there was an address for some place in Wales that I couldn't pronounce that was the factory where they were made and had a little museum and you could buy the toys in person. And I remember just kind of looking at that like a kid and being like, oh, I wish I could go there. And uh, uh, my partner at the time just saying like, well, we can. Do, do you want to go there when we go to the UK? And it was so magical because it was bursting that sort of fantasy of like, oh, that's a far away, that's impossible. Right. And she was just like, yeah, we can. Well, I'll look it up the trains. I've, I haven't been to Wales in a while. That'd be fun. And her and her sister were just like so supportive because like there was a Doctor Who exhibit and that was fun and they enjoyed it. But then I just stared at the action figures for like two hours deciding which ones to buy and how many would fit in my suitcase. And they're just like, he's in his happy place. We'll just let him be for two hours. It was 
it was amazing. amazing. Oh, wow. That's so, great. Wonderful answers. Yeah, I, I can't wait to get back to Paris. I've said many, many times and, and all that stuff. But, you know, as has been documented on the show, didn't travel a lot as a kid. But the, my, my, the trips we did take meant a lot. The, the ones to Yosemite with the now my uncle has since passed away. The one right after I took her after high school graduation. All that kind of stuff's wonderful. I, I, I fortunately, but I, I guess you could say unfortunately, but I, I think it's fortunately, I, I travel with when I work. So whether it's doing stand up or convention. So my first time to New York in 2015 was something oddly emotional because I just I had always wanted to go there. Thought my career would take me there, and I got I got afraid, and I didn't I didn't go, and I didn't travel, and I didn't visit, and I didn't see what New York could offer me when I was younger. Maybe could have made a different choice. So it was great. It was emotional. It was freeing in a weird way of saying, "All right, we didn't make this step. Uh, we can't wallow it anymore. We got to find something else." That was important. Uh, one, this is this might be odd, but uh, I I love going to Washington D.C. Uh, and Mark Ellison and I try to go every year. We're not going to be able to go this year to, to, to do comedy. The last time I was there, uh, you know, you have a lot of time. We're there for about three, four days doing doing a series of shows. You have a lot of time during the day, in the morning, you know, before you take your pre-show nap. And I, <laughs> I love the history. I love the history of our country, complicated as it is and as short as it is. Uh, and I was also oddly uh, obsessed with January 6th in how did this happen? How do we let this happen? How could we stop it from happening again? And what, and I literally did the whole, I, I went down to the, the ellipse and I, and I walked all the way to the Capitol and I was like studying it. I was texting Mark, like this, this took, well, how did they do it? I, it was a weird, but uh, educational trip for me to really spend some time in the city. And I went to the Washington monument and went to the Lincoln uh, mm -hmm. Memorial. I went to the Vietnam wall and there mm -hmm. was, ceremony going on when i went there and a bunch of uh, veterans were putting flags on it and i burst into tears and ended up uh, uh just kind of walking every panel slowly while this event was happening around us it was it was a uh, it was a good time and 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 i you know we talk often about history here and, and joseph i know uh, you spent so many times in museums uh, there's so many ways to study it the good the bad all of it and i really felt it on that trip and it was more than just oh, i'm doing comedy in a city i felt that i got to visit that city so i'm trying to recapture that again Hmm. Yeah, that's great. That's wow. great. Do you have your eyes on another place that you would like to visit specifically with that kind of like I'm here for comedy, but I have this moment to kind of have a quiet moment by myself? Yeah, there's actually uh, um, uh, I don't want to give the date away. Not, it's not 100% cause, cause confirmed, but in April of 2024, it looks like I'll be going to Boston for the first time. And, uh, someone who loves that kind of history and, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, well, I'll see Fenway, but no, just, you know go and see so i'll see what i can do i don't know how long we're gonna be there it might just be one show which is a shorter trip but uh, I'm, I'm excited that never been to boston i would like I to spend more boston, time in boston i did one show there with friends and the only thing i saw was some traffic i was like okay yeah no i get I, these these streets are old <laughs> <laughs> made up of old paths uh got it got it but i didn't get yeah. go anywhere yeah love that ah, yeah now now i want to get all i want to get all out there yeah <laughs> i got new york in two weeks but uh Oh uh, where I've been there, been there, done that. I want, I want a new city. Let's and see. the food in my beard says, "Let me know. I have Boston ah. Rex." Oh, cool! Nice. Yeah, nice. Dan, uh, Dan, uh, I'll reach out. We'll uh, see where I can get some uh, healthy and unhealthy food. I'm sure you have some. Good, <laughs> <laughs> uh, good stuff. We got some great questions coming in. Why we reset, Jen? I'll let you pick a question, but I'm going to take care of some housekeeping that normally we might do at the end of the show. But that's when maybe people start to tune out. But we got some cool things uh, going on here. Uh, I want to highlight and, and Joseph fill in any uh, festivals that they could go see this. Mm -hmm. But Joseph Short Film, The Nightmare, yes. adorable. It's an official selection for these uh, uh, film festivals right here, which means you might get uh, to see it. And some Four Center fans have. This is a wonderful, uh, 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 I don't want to say too much about any plot, but it's a wonderful mm -hmm. uh, short film. Very funny, very poignant, uh, and at times very scary, I can attest. And yeah, I had a chance to be in it. I was honored to be in it. But really, it's about Hal Lublin and Amy Warpel just absolutely bringing it on set. Uh, and a few new surprises. But Joseph, what's going on with that? And is there anywhere they can see it? Yeah, yeah. so it, I am applying away to festivals. So it is in its uh, festival circuit run, as uh, as people say. So it's been uh, uh, playing a couple places. The one on the bottom, you see there are Horrorgens. That was in Tucson, Arizona. That's happening this weekend. And the film already played. But Halloween Palooza is uh, Friday, October 13th in Ottumwa, Iowa. The H.P. Lovecraft Film Festival is next weekend in Portland, Oregon, October 6th through the 8th. The short will be playing at least uh, two times. I don't have the exact schedule yet, but I will be there for that one. 
Uh, and I don't have the the laurel for it yet, but it has also been accepted into a festival in Sofia, Bulgaria. Wow. Uh, and that one is uh, is happening uh, Halloween through the that kind of first week of November. I don't know if we have any listeners in uh, Bulgaria. I so love that we have so many uh, uh, international listeners, but I'll be sure to let you know. The Bulgarian thing is fun because a a play that I wrote called Adventures in Mating, which is a uh, choose your own adventure uh, bad date where the audience gets to vote on on whether the date behave well or poorly with one another. Uh, and the audience always votes poorly. Uh, that has been playing on and off in Bulgaria for years. And I just got a message about interest in, in continuing to do that uh, play in Bulgaria. So between the film and the play, I feel like I maybe just need to move to Bulgaria. <laughs> <laughs> where everything will just go smoothly for me, I'm sure. Uh, Colin, but Colin. Yeah, that is, uh, that's the stuff that's coming up. And I'll be sure to let people know about more stuff that's coming up. Thank you, everyone who uh, contributed to the Kickstarter the Kickstarter rewards are going out uh, as we record uh, this Tuesday, October 3rd. So if you're back at the Kickstarter level to see the film, uh, the film itself will be in your inbox soon. And maybe I'll send it to Ken so he can actually see himself. Yeah, yeah. I'd like, I'd like to see how there's, there's <laughs> one there's one scene I think you know that I'm, I'm dying to see how that turned out. Was, yeah, on, on I debate. do know. Um, another thing, and by the way, this is all wonderful housekeeping, but we're stalling so Jen can pick a question. Oh, but, oh no, no, okay. Uh, you're, no, you're not on. Uh, I want to announce, uh, as I have recently, that my uh, special uh, In My Day, live in the Harrison Pub in London, it's a comedy EP uh, recorded in front of Four Center fans. It was a great night. Joseph had a wonderful set after mine. We did a QA, and a uh, and maybe that one day we'll see uh, the light of day as well. But I put it together for a little comedy EP. I want to shout out and chat our buddy Matty Gunner and his buddy Matt Hart who uh, were able to kind of meld two tracks together and turn it into something that can release. There's a special edition that's going to be dropping as well directly on Bandcamp. And, you know, I might push you in that direction because it's got some extra content, including a set from San Diego Comic-Con uh, and a special episode of a, a podcast where I interview myself on comedy and getting this out and how this was a 20-year journey to release something that I had one night to kind of get right. But I'm happy with it. And it's coming out October 10th, available Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon Music, anywhere you can kind of stream or purchase things. And then again, the special edition on Bandcamp. So there you go. Uh, and thank you to the Force Center fans who were there in London that got to uh, uh, see it and uh, make me feel like, you know, it was all right. I think I'll get it out there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's so many great questions, a, a lot of questions about Christmas, um, but let's do, we could do the Cali Kid about top five pizza toppings ranked. Oh, yeah. mm. My number one is, is that a pineapple bacon? Yeah. Pineapple bacon, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Pineapple Canadian bacon. Yeah. And a face. <laughs> my number face. one favorite topic. I look like um, a Gary um, Little Thor character. <laughs> let's see. Mm. This is controversial, Jen. Oh, I know. Yeah, we're going to get into it. All right. Um, I'm with we, the Cali kid, and that's hot take. Hot take. Should we, in, instead of ranking them all, should mm -hmm. we pretend that we're trying to actually order a pizza, the three of us, and see how difficult it would be? Okay. Yeah. This is, I love this little play acting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, my opening gambit is always what? what's the temperature in the room about meat? Uh. Right. I'll, Good. Yeah, fine. I'll, yeah. I'll uh, yeah. Pizza's the okay. pizza's been one of the hardest things for me to do the vegan crossover. There's some great choices. Ooh. Yeah. But it ain't it ain't the same. So yeah. Some people um, have vegan pepperoni, which I'd be fine. Do you want vegan pepperoni, Ken? No, no, I don't want to do that to ourselves. Okay, good. Okay. Uh <laughs> Jennifer, do you have a, a preferred meat? Uh well, it depends on the rest of the toppings. Normally I <laughs> order chicken. Chicken. Uh, well, it depends. If we're gonna do a, a meat lover supreme style thing, then mm -hmm. then we can we can go hog wild. I'm fine with chicken. Let's have <laughs> an adventure. Hog but, wild, literally. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so dumb. Um, but I'll have gonna... the uh, <laughs> the 24 inch hog wild, please. <laughs> I think I'm tired. But uh, but if we're gonna like do a different, you know, vegetables and stuff like that, my choice is is chicken uh, or sausage. Yeah. I think I, I let's do chicken. Okay. Chicken. Uh, okay. Ken doesn't like it. Ken doesn't no, like no, it. No, 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 no. no. I, I, have, I have follow up questions. So, okay. so I do like sausage, but you're right. It, sausage only kind of goes with other kind of things, or maybe a hey, here's all the meat in our kitchen on the pizza thing. I'm not opposed to chicken because I do love a uh, like a buffalo chicken pizza or the mm. old uh, 
Wolfgang Puck uh, had a chicken pizza that was kind of a famous one. You could get it at every grocery store frozen. So I like it. Do you just you just putting chicken on there, Jen, or is it or is it uh, in your mind go with something a little better? I think I'm gonna have to order my own pizza because this is what happens: is that everyone has their it's own breaking ideas. Breaking down already, it's and breaking I, down already. And I'm always like, I'll just order my own. No, 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 no. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play the role of uh, other center dad. We can get a pizza together. We've got chicken on it. Ken, Kenny, I'm good. What with do you the, want on the pizza? I'm good with the chicken on it. Um, what else I, do you want on it, Kenny? Look, I do like I do like uh, uh, pineapple and Canadian bacon, but that uh, that's I'm going to spare you all that if you don't like it. Uh, I can I, Canadian bacon or just straight up bacon. I Canadian, I, I you know my whole life I don't really know the difference. So anyone from uh, the Great White North who's here, can you explain the difference? It's just like a different cut and feel. It's a lighter cut, so it's, it's and thinner, it's bacon. thinner yeah. sliced, right? It's thinner, polite, yeah. polite bacon, indeed. Um, oh man, this is yeah. This is um, so no, but I'm, I'm, unless you unless you all want that, I want that. But uh, my follow up is uh, I'll, I'll go with the uh, I love a mushroom and olive combo. Love it, great. Okay, okay, I'm great with the mushrooms. I I I gotta uh, veto the olives. <gasps> I, I, I'm just not an olive person. It is the largest <laughs> sense source of friction in my marriage with my wife. Uh, I, I have asked graphics people to to you know draw me with martini and stuff, and then I always have to say, "This is beautiful. Could you please take the olives out of a martini?" I'm a twist person. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the olives. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We could do we could do one side with olives. So no. So, so chicken and mushroom. Now it sounds like we have a cream of mushroom soup going. Yeah. But I'm okay. Yeah. With that. We need something to zing it up. Uh, Jennifer, yeah. are you okay with pineapple? On that. Yeah. Well, not where I'm headed. Not where I'm headed, because I, I, I'm headed to salty. I'm held, headed to salty heat town. That's where okay. I'm held, headed. <laughs> salty, it, spicy town. Okay, and and so we have chicken and mushroom. Is that mm -hmm. where we're gonna leave it, or do we have a third topping? Jen, where are you going? Artichoke hearts. I always get artichoke oh. hearts. Yeah, I'll well, do that. Sam. Ken. Yeah. Is that? Oh my! Uh, I mean, I'm, yeah, that I'm is gonna... not your normal body language. You're <laughs> normally like Mister Lean In. Let me get yeah. more intimate. Let me get more real. Let me get even closer to the mic. And that was the first time I've ever seen you go. Mm. He bristled, uh, and my artichoke hearts physically repulsed from the mic. Okay. I I've had them on pizzas, but it's because I'll I'll do the veggie option. Um, I learned early on when I was in junior high, I won a contest for a little improv contest with my team and they ordered pepperoni and they ordered veggie and no one touched the veggie. So I was like, I'm going to learn to like veggie pizza. And I got the entire pizza to myself. I'm good with where you're going, but it's the chicken mushroom artichoke heart combo. <laughs> it, the plane was flying and now it's now I'm concerned it, where it's going. It, it's it, the it, olives it, that tie it together. I'm sorry. <laughs> we no, lost you're right. It, it needs some sort of kick because <laughs> it is getting to be a, an upsettingly beige pizza. Uh, I then get banana peppers and jalapenos. I do uh, both. Okay. So, I'll do that. Uh, I'll do that. Uh, what's a jalapeno? As a pizza topping, what, what, what level of intensity is a jalapeno? Uh, it depends. Well, you and you could manage it, it maybe mild. for a slice. You could toss one off if you don't like. If it's one, yeah, too yeah. Well, I'll do it. I'll do right. it. I'll okay, experiment. So, oh, wow, wow. Since I vetoed the olive, okay, I will get that jalapeno. And now I'm not doing banana peppers. Those the, there's a textural issue there. Okay, okay. that's they're, fine. They're slippery. Okay, all right. Well, if we can keep the jalapenos, we'll, we'll trade out the banana peppers. Yeah, sure. <laughs> chicken, oh mushroom, jalapenos, artichoke hearts. Our now. Hearts. <laughs> are we going with a red sauce? Or are we going with a white sauce? Oh, no, oh, it has to be no, red. It's sauce. red sauce. Come on, oh, my. Like, you got, am I? You got it. White sauce. It's pizza. not white enough for you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh no, no, oh no. Uh, what about thick a... or thin? We didn't even talk about that. Oh, yeah, thin. Mm. Uh, thin I, I I like thicker crust, uh, but uh, in my older age, I got to go thinner. But I'll go. Okay. With, I'll go. I'll, with the I team. can do a thin crust, but thin then. Is good. All right, yeah. but I think here's maybe the the final uh, controversy. Now that we've yeah. settled on a a mostly beige pizza with some kick, uh, square slices or triangle slices? Oh, oh, I love a square size slice. There's there's a place in Burbank that sells uh, a pizza so big that they have to build a special delivery car for it, wow. and it's kind of their thing. And um, uh, yeah, yeah, it's they got the square slices. It's easier to eat. Mm. Mm -mm. If, if it's going to be square, <laughs> then I want it to be like the deep dish 
thick crust pizza. Ooh, and then so, I want to change up the whole pizza to like make it pepperoni or something. Right. The square, the, the square isn't for you. We're no. back to square one. We're, We're back, back to, to uh, yes. Well, we've got some good wisdom coming in. Your sauce should match your meat. That's right. <laughs> that's Bob Dylan. Yeah, he's still oh, wait, oh, wait, no, no, that's not right. No, because yeah, then it would be chicken yeah. with the white sauce. White sauce with chicken, red sauce, everything else. That's why I mm. thought of the that's the thing. Uh, no. <laughs> Phil's here. All right, Phil, we need Phil. help. Here. Yay. Phil. Yeah, we put need, down yeah. your, your wonderful some... artistic pen and 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 your uh your, your writing good things these days, too, of course. Uh as always, white we sauce. We need an art of pizza sauce. book, is what we need. Of, yes. We need an art of pizza book, Phil. White sauce or red sauce. We I can't believe I'm alone on this white sauce island. Oh, white, white sauce. sauce is fine, and I understand that yes, um mm. in that adventures and mating play that I was joking about, I used to have a um uh, I will school sausage and green peppers, Kevin. That's nice. I can do that. That's yeah. nice and solid. It's that solid. Like they don't have to go through with this. Uh, yeah, the the idea that that uh, the white wine went with chicken and sadness. I get that white uh, <laughs> and mm. and chicken go together, yeah. but mm. this is a zesty pizza. It's got jalapeno on it. Got Artichokes. We yeah. didn't even talk about like bell peppers. What else? Sometimes I don't know about spinach. Uh, I mean. Spinach is a risk because I like it, but sometimes it's suddenly like there's a salad lurking under the cheese because there's yeah. so much spinach. Right. Which is also a textural issue. Like a yeah. spinach and feta cheese pizza I'll go with. Ooh, no, that that's right. good. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, Phil came, came out swing red sauce. He's originally from New Jersey. So <laughs> traditionalist. Yeah. I've, run, I've run into those East Coast pizza traditionalists. They don't like my take on New York mm -hmm. pizza. So, uh, you know. <laughs> We're so close to placing this order. We have a thin... <laughs> A uh, crust pizza with red sauce, with uh, chicken, mushrooms, yeah. artichoke hearts, and jalapeno. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. We just need to know how we're how we're cutting it. Are we? I'll go. Look, I, I'll go. I'll go with whatever the the way the wind blows on cutting it. I don't need it one way or other. Because okay. if if I'm gonna do the triangles, I'm probably gonna roll it anyways. Um, if it's thin, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, we did it. We proved that we can <laughs> order a pizza. And now we can stay podcasting together. <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I, I didn't see who made the comment, but someone said that we should make this a uh, an other center challenge where we actually have to order and eat this pizza together. This does not sound that bad, particularly if the chick. I know I, chicken sounds bland, I think, when you're talking about pepperoni yeah. and sausage mm. and bacon. But it yeah. really depends on the place. If it is just like, here is a lump of chicken <laughs> yeah. versus yeah. it's all spiced up. Mm -hmm. right i like blaze pizza uh it's always a fun a fun spot and they have great chicken and there's a ton of you know pizza places around here but it's true new york uh, no one can beat them i'm sorry not much, but see, i don't i don't i don't like new york pizza i don't oh that's right no, that's right don't. oh no I think, I think it's preposterous and and what? i just uh and i like i like i'd rather have a Times square hot dog Oh, Times Square hot dog's good too. Yeah, yeah, you fold up that hot dog and you eat it on the go. Wait, that's not. Uh... <laughs> that's not it. <laughs> it's just, it's uh, yeah. I, I've been, I've been, and I'm going to New York in two weeks. I won't touch the pizza, but it, man, oh. I'll stop at every hot dog cart on the way. Well, now's a good time to realize our our new sponsor is Pizza <laughs> it's Other pizza. Center, brought to you by All Pizza Everywhere. This was a great question. Of course, yeah, Romo's got to talk about her, 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 uh, her, where, oh, there is it. Um, Detroit, Detroit style. Detroit style. I still to this day, I've heard of it. I don't think yes. it really exists. I think Lauren's making this up, but that's, that's just me. No, I'm kidding. It, it's, yeah. I've never had it. Mm, so. Well, that I was think... a great question. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. I'm hungry. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We've got the, we've got this Patreon goal, not to just plug the Patreon, but we want to take uh, uh, this uh, mm. field trip to to try our desserts. If that works out well, maybe mm -hmm. we can do a pizza field trip of some kind. I love this. Ooh. Love this idea. If 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 if, uh, if we set a giant goal and hit it, the field trip would be to my hometown and Klondike Klondike Pizza, which specializes in a white sauce pizza. <laughs> I got nothing against that. white sauce. Just that <laughs> that the feeling that some you know. Uh, chicken etiquette book is dooming me to white sauce no matter what <laughs> white sauce is fine you're doomed maybe you're doomed. that was a little negative to say <laughs> but thank you everyone for this is perhaps the most fiery look at this yeah. gasp i don't even no. know what that's about oh. uh, who Mama. knows with the the flood of strong opinions uh, yeah. and and yeah. yeah thank you again phil for uh for checking in and yeah. setting us straight
Yes. The art indeed. of pizza. There you go. Uh, from pizza, we're going to go to dreams here. We got Matthew Stokes. Mm. Thanks for the super chat. What are your feelings on dreams? Recurring dreams? The meaning dreams? How much you remember Ooh. when you wake up? And do you ever think there's the start of a great story in a dream? Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, this is deep, Jen. Uh, what do you dream about? And do you take notes? And does it mean anything? You know, it's funny. When I was a kid, I feel like I used to have kind of the same dream over and over again. A lot of dreams where I was like getting crushed by waves in the ocean, dreams of me losing my teeth. And I would have these like, these are more like nightmares, I suppose. I would have these nightmares for years. And then now when I've become a parent, I don't have dreams as often, but my kids do. And so they'll come to me and it is kind of fascinating to put things together. Oh, remember you were watching that show or this happened, which made your brain think of blah, blah, blah. And your brain is trying to work it out in the night. And it, and it does help because otherwise it can just seem really scary. Like, why do I keep thinking that I'm in the ocean drowning? Mm. <sighs> yeah. That's mm. my dream. <laughs> That's deep. That's deep. Have you ever tried to process it with any sort of? Um, art. Most of my sentences end in a choose your own adventure of art or therapy. Mm. Um, but no, art. Do, have you ever tried to like do a drawing or a dance or anything about the oceanic dream? No, but I think that there is like uh, an art process where you do try and like write down your dreams and I don't know, you incorporate it in your work. I, I, I stumbled upon some uh, acting teacher who had that theory. Um, mm -hmm. I never went through with it though. Cause I always forget to write it down in the morning. So write down your dreams. Cause you never know. It could be a great poem, be a great uh, piece of art, mm -hmm. drawing, whatever. Huh? Yeah. No, it, it, it's powerful. Uh, how about you, Ken? Um, I, you know, I don't dream as much these days. I did have a pretty vivid dream recently that I was booked at the, uh, magic and comedy club in Hermosa beach and I missed the first show and <gasps> I wasn't allowed on the second show. And I woke up just like, ah, oh, I'm not even booked there. And I'm afraid to get booked there. Now. What happened with that? Um, I've had some weird dreams. Uh, I, I remember, uh, some related to some family issues with my sister and I, I still, I actually did write it down and it was, uh, I, I will say oddly prophetic. Uh, two series of dreams, but I've had some weird dreams, and every uh, this is one that pops to mind. And everyone thinks I'm joking or making some kind of wisecrack or something like that. In the mid 2000s, I had a very, very detailed dream in which I sat on an outside cafe with Paris Hilton and talked to her about her choices in men and how I was hoping for the best, but I just didn't think it was going right. And I had this detailed, detailed, detailed. I woke up like, what's What's go? What does that mean? Like, what does that mean? I remember every little detail about it. It was during the height of that simple life era and mm. party era and all that stuff. Mm. And, and I just remember like, that's, that's, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I remember that one. So, but on that, I don't have deep dreams. I don't remember it. No song lyrics come to mind. No stand up bits, no four center topics. I go to sleep. <laughs> I wake up when the chihuahuas wake me up. Mm. And I know I have them. I just, I just don't remember. Yeah. yeah, I think it is, as I get older, if I don't remember them, uh, if I don't write them down or say them out loud to myself, uh, pretty much right away, they will start fading. And maybe I'll remember the emotion. Um, yeah. I, In general, I think I, I dream pretty vividly. I, I had one when I was young about a serial killer uh, mm. that stuck with me, uh, partially because it was perhaps the most terrifying dream I've ever had. But the serial killer had a catchphrase as they were sneaking through the house. And when I woke up, I realized their catchphrase was just absolutely ridiculous, but it was terrifying in the dream. The, the serial killer would be walking around in the dark with a knife and, and uh, they'd say, Reeky Deeky D. <laughs> like, <laughs> why was I scared of that? Why was I scared of this bad scat in my house? Like, I don't know, but it was a terrifying dream. That's like a, a Goosebumps uh, story. I like yeah, it. it. Like, what? Yeah, it yeah. sounds like some weird, you know, Super Mario <laughs> character. That's, uh, you never know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I've had a couple of vivid dreams with um, with creators. I did. I, I've talked about it on Force before. I did have one uh, w with uh, Lucas once that felt like, you know, advice or whatever um, mm. kind of thing, uh, which. Uh, was was nice i i think you remember I, I think for me i remember the uh the emotions uh much more strongly and i think those are actually almost more valuable sort of um artistically mm. of like why am i feeling that and 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 what is that that strong pull toward i i think the dream sensation where um you're upset about something and when you wake up you realize like oh i'm kind of upset with this friend 
Yeah. But yeah. the person in the dream wasn't the right person. Like they were mm. wearing a mask. Yes. You right. know, be like, here's this person in my life that I, to my knowledge, have absolutely no problem with. But like <laughs> I see them pop up on social media. I'm like that a hole. Like, no, they were just in the dream kind of wearing the mask of the person or being the mask for the person I was actually mad at. Mm. That kind mm. of stuff and the way the logic of dreams works, I think, is is what I get interested in at all mm. artistically trying to write down and remember. Yeah, it's yeah. Correct. I, I had a roommate uh, in the early 2000s and he went on to uh, he did um, help to uh, work on Invader Zim and he mm. got a lot of com um, comics out there and everything. And, and one night I hear a smash and he broke his window and I go in. It's like 3 a.m. and his hand was all bloody and he was there. And he, and he goes, I, 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 I had to get out of my house because of something I was dreaming. And, 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 he, and, he, and, and he goes, I draw to get the monsters out of my dreams. And, it, and he goes, every night I have these kind of dreams. I'm like, what is, what is happening? Wow. And I had to like patch up his hand and like, it just was, wow. it was, uh, and I'm like, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I have coffee with Paris Hilton. So I don't know. <laughs> I'm curious if either of you have the, uh, perf performance uh uh dream since you you're both performers uh, mm -hmm. of different kinds that one's pretty i've had pretty often lots of different variations of the i could have done an awesome show if anyone had told me that a show was happening like mm. the worst wow. was when i had when i was doing theater a lot and and you know trying to get get booked doing like larger theater shows and the organizers were just like, yeah, we told you you had a show and you had plenty of time to rehearse it and write it, but you'll just have to kind of figure it out. You got like four hours. Oh, and you're uh, you're performing it on one of the pyramids of Egypt. It's a absolute <laughs> dream show, but you just forgot to prepare that. Yeah. it That's the specific thing to forgetting to prepare that I have nightmares about. Do you guys mm -hmm. have those kind of performance anxiety <laughs> dreams? I mean, it sounds like you're describing like arriving in Hollywood and everyone's like, the game's <laughs> on. You're like, are we all gonna have a good time? Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the one I talked about was pretty vivid recently of of, of uh, looking at the wall where they, you know, the list of the times of the comics and I realized I missed my stat and everything. But um, yeah, some of that stuff, some of the the old, uh, you know, uh, on stage without your clothes on, I guess can kind of, you know, the emotions behind it uh, 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 pop up, but nothing specific again. Uh, it's a, uh, I'm again, not saying I have sleepless dreams, but uh, <laughs> it's it's pretty boring. Pretty boring. I yeah. wish the dreams that I think that I still have are one of my days as a server where mm. I would forget to put an order in for a table. Mm. And then I, and then I would realize too late. Oh shoot. I forgot to put in their order and now they're mad. And it's just that, that <laughs> pit in your stomach, you know, that feeling of just, Oh, so I've, I've had that dream a lot, even mm. years after I stopped serving. That's a very similar thing of like this, this did not have to be a problem. And I made one small mistake and now it is a problem. Mm, good interpretation. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Welcome again to therapy center. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, I grew up at the tail end of the John Wayne Gacy stuff in Chicago. Serial killer. Oh. Dreams of Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Terrifying. Ken, I think, it, have you, uh, have you picked a question in a while? Um, yeah, I can. I will work on one, but first, I love every version of Four Centers of Cali. Yeah, thank you for that very thank you, Cali. Uh, generous super chat there. Uh, let me go back to our list here. Um, we had uh, this is bizarre. No, it's wonderfully bizarre here. Um, Jared, oh. uh, med medieval weapon of choice. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I, you know, I get it because when I was in about fourth or fifth grade, I either wanted to be a ninja or a knight from the tenth century or something like that. I read all those books. Um, I, I, and then being like a, a fan of like say like Game of Thrones or something where a lot of weapons kind of mean things. Um, I would want uh like two small, smaller little uh, blades. You know, uh, I I don't know if I have the forearm strength for a big broadsword. Uh, and I don't know if that's good in battle, but I, I, I would like to two two small little. I'd be like the dual wielding knight. There goes old Kenny Two Blades. Just run along. That's where I'd go. I, mm -hmm. I'm I tried it. Oh, there's a lot of other things. A war hammer. You can go a lot of places, but I want I want a little, uh, you know, maneuverability in my fighting. Mm. Yeah, I would say I want it to be a mace uh, because those are just cool. The huge, you know, a ball with spikes on a chain. Like oh, that's those are, what I was thinking. Yeah, those are like three different. I want it to be a mace, but that I think requires more skill. Uh, I I have uh played with uh broadswords for theater, <laughs> their props yeah. and everything. Uh, 
But I think that that would be my better defense because a broadsword, you can just sort of swing in front of you in the sort of like, uh, I'm going to do this. And if you walk into it, it's your problem. Kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Uh, defense, yeah. If I was in an alternate universe, if I was Game of Thrones a fight, willow a fight, and I was a real badass and really, really uh, buff, <laughs> I would definitely have a mace. And it would be cool because then I could just go like this. Swoosh. And it's always the character that comes out with that that you're like, oh, shoot, it's going down now. That would be me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You yeah. can see if you can just scare people off with a demonstration of your mace spitting <laughs> skills and they run away. It'd be a really yep, funny. Yep. Uh, Maddie Gunners is a gigantic speech. hammer. Uh, <laughs> oh, Jared says is Morning Star for me. Yeah, that's good. Morning Star. Neil's got a good. Just a, how about a nice big axe? And my yeah. axe. You know. Yeah. Yeah. This is great. Well, uh, next time maybe we'll try to order medieval weapons together, like we ordered our pizza. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, we can each have our own. It will be a good squad when you have our. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, a lot of pizza comments. Yeah, and uh, we got some other questions we're gonna get to here. We should note that we're going to about three thirty. I know uh, Jen has a, 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 an out that uh, we're gonna honor, and uh, Justin and I uh, will as well. So if you got any questions, the super chat, super thanks, all those things, it's uh, uh, coming down to the final innings of the game here. Uh, so yeah. uh, that's what we're doing here. So, yeah, let me grab this oh, bright, uh, colorful question uh, from Brian Tiller, uh, who asks, what was your favorite childhood cartoon? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, it is a complex. Uh, yeah, because. Yeah. yeah, I was explaining this to my kids because they don't understand how there was only a certain amount of time on Saturday mornings that my cartoons were on because now they, you know, they have Disney plus Netflix, yeah. all that stuff. Um, but if back in the day, I, the immediate one would be like Smurfs. It was just one that I just, I don't know. I love, it was kind of the same formula, but then again, I love Smurfs, Jetsons, um, Rainbow Bright, Strawberry shortcake, mm -hmm, gummy mm -hmm. bears, obviously the Ewoks. I mean, it's, there's just so many. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's like the ritual, right? The ritual of it. After school on Saturday morning, right? And it's right. two different emotional categories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I take it as, as, um, saturday morning because that was you know uh, in our generation yeah. the 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 afternoons came came in strong eventually um but i think th for me that was like one of my early genre uh uh desires of wanting more genre wanting more superheroes fantasy science fiction and i like smurfs and they are technically i would say fantasy <laughs> yeah. and, and uh, demonic and demonic jen how dare you no, no. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. I forgot about that. A lot going on with the smarts, but uh, it's it is. Well, I was just going to plan old promote uh, struck work, which I shouldn't do. Anyway, sorry, I... uh, no, that, that, that we'll, we'll be quick and, and move on. Spider Man and his amazing friends. If you haven't watched it, it's Ooh. delightfully weird uh, yes. because it is a, from an entirely different era in the way the whole thing is constructed, animated. Uh, but I'll make a bold statement that it's the beginning of the MCU. <laughs> <laughs> because it's huh? not just spider-man he's got two friends and then other random people uh, show up if you just want to watch one uh look for the episode called swarm and, and you will mm. see the madness love that there um that's great uh i think if we're going saturday morning the thing that i had to be up for and would not miss is is muppet babies big muppet <gasps> baby fan yes. uh, love that even had some little muppet baby toys that are somewhere in my storage there so yeah um, and they would go into a lot of the, uh, you know, uh, things that we liked in terms of movies, but, uh, you know, I was a big, uh, Muppets kid growing up and the Muppet show and everything. So, uh, I, yeah, I loved it. I was there for it. So, uh, I'll answer that one for my Saturday mornings. Yeah. The snorks, Thundercats, uh, there was DuckTales, He-Man, oh my, Gem and the Holograms. I'm saying all, yeah. Uh, yeah. all the struck work. Sorry, guys. I just yeah, no, no. I mean, I'm you know I'm there with GI Joe and Transformers and Robotech, but I think Joseph's right. That the spirit of the question seemed to be: you pour your bowl of cereal, you in your pajamas. What are you watching? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Hey, somebody else uh, who remembers Brian Jackson, Mister McClunky. Too many to choose from: Thunder yeah. the Barbarian, Herculoids, and yes, Swarm Spider Man. Uh, I've been obsessed with that for years. He-Man taught me uh, the principle of intermittent reinforcement. 
<laughs> where you will uh, keep going back for something with the uh, possibility of uh, of getting what you want because oh, I love right. because they cycled through the hench people and I yeah. loved merman and every day was mm -hmm. just please please merman and I turned tuned in every every day every day oh, but only got merman every once in a while but when I got him it reminded me that it was possible to get him and then I tried again yeah possible to get bourbon ah love that good stuff good question there uh, a few more uh here uh this has been a lot of fun we appreciate you all hanging with us uh, here for other center uh uh jen uh where do you want to go with this one you got any questions popping uh, out here i got so wrapped up in the cartoons yeah, you can pick one too um let's see go oh, new oops i just oh yeah yeah that's a good one button. okay great all right is that one yeah, do, yeah, yeah. We talked about the visual arts. If not, who are our favorite artists? We haven't Ooh. done like a deep dive. Like uh, early on in Other Center, we did a deep dive on acting. We haven't done like a deep dive on visual arts. Um, Jennifer, what, what, uh, you, you, you do, I know you do a lot of cool and great craft stuff, uh, which I think is, is absolutely visual art. What's your relationship with it? Um, I would say visual arts, uh, Frida Kahlo, but one of my favorite photographers is Cindy Sherman. Mm. Um, she did a lot of self, well, she still does self portraits and they were always very cinematic. It was almost like she was capturing a moment from a film, a film that didn't exist. She just would create it. Mm. And it was, uh, really, really fascinating. There's just so, I love photographers like that. Deanne Arbus is another one, another great photographer, um, but boy, we should do a four center, a other center about that because there's so many to explore. Yeah, absolutely. Do you do, uh, um, have you, did you do any drawing or anything as a kid? Did you nah. gravitate toward that or is that I'm just terrible? Not... I'm terrible. I always would see my, my, you know, seatmate being able to do all these incredible drawings. I'm so bad. My daughter is awesome. Um, but yeah, I've never, I, I admire, I admire all you artists out there. I cannot do it. Even my daughter's like, what is that, mom? I'm like, it's a cat. <laughs> Can't you tell? <laughs> uh, I, I think we need to start a campaign to uh, to see uh, the Jennifer cat because uh, sometimes <laughs> I I think the the uh, those are the the less perfect cats are the more beautiful cats. <laughs> the simplistic, the minimalist. Cat. The minimalist cat. Yes, That's what we're gonna call it. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Ken, how about you? None for me. This is this is a big, not just a blind spot. Um, uh, I I can appreciate it. I go to love going to museums. Uh, got the chance to go to the Louvre, all that stuff. Uh, photography, you know, I go. Yeah, you know, I love good nature photography. Ansel Adams, all that kind of stuff. Uh, my dad is an artist, so he um, actually sold some paintings, wow, uh, life drawings, and, and also could do some uh, classical, like a cartoonist type of Saturday morning kind of strip kind of stuff, and. And uh, they tried. My parents tried to encourage that side. I was I went to art um, class like during the summer, and um, yep, that was not my <laughs> not my path. Just couldn't get it. Just can't get it. It, it just doesn't work. And so I appreciate it. Uh, like I said, I love going through a museum. Uh, you know, I like some pop culture art. This is uh, Nan Lawson behind me all the time. Oh, uh, yeah. um, she has some original stuff she's selling out too. Uh, local uh, local to LA, friend of a friend. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's and it's not for. Um, I don't like it. I think, like I said, I could, I could, I love going to the Getty. Uh, I love that stuff. Um, but I just, I always gravitated to once music kicked in, that was the art I went to comics, uh, uh, films. I, I went that direction and I, I never slowed down for this side of it. Uh, and it might be because I tried to draw a paper bag in class and I couldn't do it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, visual art has been a big part of my life just because it was uh something that adults told me that i was uh, good at uh and so i gravitated toward that but then i loved comic books so much and wanted to be a comic book artist and i went to college for uh visual art and then uh got uh wonderfully distracted by live performance and comedy in, in theater but also i had a weird relationship with it because i came at it of um i i i'm still I know some art history, but I'm not in any way an expert on art history. I liked doing it. And my favorite artist going into college uh, was George Perez from the Teen Titans and <laughs> Bill Sinkovich from the the from the uh, the New Mutants and uh, Mike Zach from uh, the Secret Wars um, and all sorts of these different artists. And, and I had some teachers who supported me and I had some teachers who were like, if there are firm lines as opposed to shapes, 
if there are lines, that's illustration. Mm. Those comic books you like are illustration because there are lines. And, you know, uh, one of my uh, first um, upsetting run-ins to gatekeeping. So uh, I still list all those comic book artists as my favorite artists, but uh, other artists that I really, I really like Degas. I, he uses lines and shapes, yes. um, and street scenes, and there's such humanity in it. And um, I absolutely love Edward Hopper. I think oh, there's yeah, uh, just yeah. uh, uh, there's something extremely honest and haunting. And and I have a I bought a graphic novel about his life recently, and I just love how he's like, I'm not. I wasn't trying to show the lost soul of America. I'm just painting things. And I guess you all saw <laughs> the lost, the lonely soul of America. So anyway, <laughs> bye. So yeah, Edward Hopper. There's my answer. It's hmm, a good uh, one. Great stuff. Yeah. Thanks, Seth. Love it. Love hearing you guys' takes on it. And, and Jeannie from Tahini says comics are art. And yep. I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I want to make sure we get to this one. It came in earlier uh, and hopefully we can help uh, our, our force and listener here uh, maybe feel better about this. Natalie says, I had to face my phobia of needles today to have my blood taken, which got me wondering what are other people uh, scared of? Do you have any phobias or strange things that frighten you? Well, Natalie, uh, we, we hope you got through that and you're going to get through it again if you have to do it. I don't have any tips for it. Just know that you're going to be OK. Um, but phobias. Jen, what are you afraid of? And uh uh, is it on stage for eight minutes at a comic club? Yeah, that would be one of them. I have developed many phobias. The biggest one that I had, as I've mentioned before, is my phobia of sharks. I could not look mm -hmm. at a picture of a shark. I would actually like go like mm -hmm. that. Um, I couldn't go in the ocean. I didn't want to swim at night in a pool. Now my phobias have continued. I'm suddenly afraid of heights. That was never a thing. I'm mm. also scared to fly in a plane. And I literally, if there's any turbulence, you guys, I'm like, this is it. This is it. And I start clutching it and I'm trying not to show my kids that I'm freaking <laughs> out. And my husband's like sitting there asleep and I'm like, we are going down. We need to, we need to figure out something. So could you not nap during death? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was bad. It was bad when we came back from, from uh, Cape Cod. Oh my gosh. But yeah. So I, maybe it's my anxiety now that I'm thinking about it. Maybe I just have a lot of anxiety. Maybe that's where the phobias come from. Mm. Uh, that's great. Mm. Yeah. We'll yeah. Uh, for me, uh, snakes, I don't know. What, I don't know how that got in so, Thanks, so yeah. deep. And like, it, it, it is definitely at that fear level because like, uh, my nephew has a pet snake and he's on like, why are people so scared of them? Cause their skin is a different texture. They've just basically, they have horrible branding in our culture. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, this snake is nothing to be afraid of. It's not going to bite you. And I still think of petting it and like, don't, don't, don't want to though. Like it's. I, I did have a, a a snake in a biology class that um, that threw up during the class, which is a whole thing. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. So snakes is definitely totally. It's irrational. It's totally irrational. Mm. Um, and then I've I've I have witnessed a couple of knee injuries, and uh, so th those upset me. That's Ooh. a hard thing for me. Yeah. Oh okay. yeah. Yeah. Um, this is great. I, I don't have any giant ones now, but I've worked through some of my life or had some of them. Like I used to, I, I never had flown in a plane. And then over time um, that built up and then I started flying and, 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 and now I do love it. Jen, I can't give you any advice uh, other than just, uh, you know, you know, have order another uh, martini from the uh, <laughs> flight attendant. Um, right. But yeah, yeah. Snakes is one for me, Joseph. And I, I really agree with mm. that branding issue now i raised rats as pets as a kid so the idea that a lot of my friends were like oh i i go to the store and get rats <laughs> and the snake. Oh. i think that was part of it i just didn't yep. like that yep. um um but it's like the the that weird fear of snakes not that not that a boa constrictor is going to drop out of my uh, roof here in burbank but the thought of slowly being killed and maybe swallowed kind of a, alive by a, a snake and knowing that this is happening, you can't do anything. I think there's a little, that's where some of my snake phobia comes from. Wow. Um, I've gotten better. And, you know, I was in the desert a couple weeks, a couple weeks ago and saw like a garden snake and I was like, Oh, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm good with that one there, but I can, I'm going to go inside now. Um, spiders. Uh, 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 Grace has a, a, a very bad phobia of spiders. So I'm kind of on spider patrol. So I used to never love them. But because of that, I've just gotten more used to them and I'll actually move them now and move their webs and, you know, yeah, be at peace with them. Uh, if, if there if one's in the shower or the house, I don't kill them. I've removed them outside because they've done nothing wrong other than take a wrong turn. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it, they come and go. I find like I had a little bit of heights or falling phobia, but I love heights. Yes. So it's weird. So when I was at the Grand Canyon, it kicked in uh, a little claustrophobia every now and then on, uh, mm. on tight 
tight spots. Like if I have to get an oh, MRI yeah. in my life, I've never had to get an MRI. Grace oh. had, to, had to get a few this year and, and just describing it. I actually, her sister goes with her cause I can't be there for him. Cause I, yeah. I just, I that one's live. hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Things mm-hmm. Like that. So yeah, I wish I, I wish I had a big, I could identify it. It's just, they pop up in weird times when you least expect it. I do exactly. think going back to dreams, I think they are connected to the currents in our life and mm-hmm. they are triggered by what's going on underneath and, and what, especially with animals, the way they've been branded by society of what do they mean? It's like, yeah. yeah. And I think, yeah, I'm, I'm afraid that something is slithering toward me that will end my life and I won't see it coming. I guess mm. I don't like snakes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's the Cali kid. Uh, who says, I'm afraid of long concession lines at the movie theater. I fear missing the beginning of the movie. Which yeah, I think that's we can real. all agree with. A mm, shared dude. fear. That's where, yeah, I don't know if it's a fear phobia, but I have, like, if you go to movies with me, I'm annoying because I'm like, it starts at 7, we're going to be there at 5.45. And we're <laughs> gonna, and we're Not annoying the- at <laughs> all. Not annoying at all. The way to go. The way yeah. to go. Uh, oh, well, we are almost out of here. Jen, uh, final quick question. Give an answer here. Trey T says, uh, do we already know what Jennifer's favorite cheese was? Did we get that answer? Uh, week to this week. No, my, my favorite cheese. I love goat cheese. Usually yeah. it's, it's great on salads. It's great with crackers. You can pizza? just pizza. Now that would go great on our chicken. We could have added goat cheese. Well, yeah, let's, let's send it back. Okay, we'll add a little <laughs> sprinkling. Yeah, yeah. goat cheese. Nice. Oh my gosh, yes, for sure. I mean, but of course, like if I'm going to have a, a sandwich, like a melt, like a tuna melt, it's got to mm-hmm. be cheddar. Mm. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Love that. Yeah. You're doing great. Great stuff. Uh, Jen, we can say goodbye to you while Joseph and I wrap up the show. Thanks for being here. Uh, Molly Damon supports both of you. A Go goat cheese. cheese man. And I, I like goat cheese too. <laughs> Uh, so that is uh, that is good. And uh, Rona got an uppercrust crust sandwich. Yes. 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 Very that? excited to hear that. Very... Yeah. Oh, I want to get an upper crust sandwich. Oh, they're so good. <laughs> uh, we'll take you to King's Cross Station where they had a lot of variety. Yes. Oh, yes. There you oh go. my gosh. Um, well, thank perfect. you. Goodbye, Jen. Thanks okay, for being bye. here. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you, you all so much. much. This is fun as usual. Yeah, great See you on job. The flip side. Bye. All right. Jen is out. So we're wrapping up the show here. I guess we could take a couple more, Joseph, and then wrap it up. But this is it. Uh, we are wrapping up the show. Alex says hi. He's driving. That's that's great. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> uh, I, I'm so curious where they're going. If they're going somewhere exciting. Friday night in Georgia. Who knows where they're going? Friday so night places. in Georgia. Probably heading to dad's garage for some improvisational comedy. That's what that I, is. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've had a, a wonderful, a thriving group of people. Our friend Ken uh, made the colorful comment. Remember to hit that like button, folks. Hit that like button. <laughs> Ken, at this point, I, I I try to keep up with all the YouTubes. Uh-huh. What, is there an what which what like button is helping us at this point? Like, like while we're broadcasting, just well, like you need to be re- just hammering that like button. Like, like, and comments somehow translates to interest in the old YouTube algorithm machine. Where Ooh, now it's even okay. subs. Subs mean less these days, which is a bummer because you still need to get a thousand to get monetized. So my ASMR channel's not monetized because I can't get over that. But uh, yeah, that that's where it's kind of at. You know, it all helps. Okay. It all it helps. All helps. It <laughs> Everything's. We are all here to please the almighty algorithm, aren't that's we? Right. It's All right, what sad. are these uh, remaining questions you want to try to grab? Um, I, Rick had this question here. Uh, this would be a great one. Uh, I was going to try to get to before Jen uh, left, but I forgot about it. Mm-hmm. I, uh, Rick says, any good Halloween stories? I once punched a mask at a haunted house when I was 12. <laughs> and then Trey T, who arrived uh, uh, late in the show, says, that, is Joseph wearing a cape? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Um, Halloween stories. Halloween stories. I... I'm trying to, because again, it's not my favorite holiday. So I haven't spent a lot of time dressed up, but like, um, I, w- <laughs> I want a goldfish at my church's Halloween thing. And, and that goldfish I kept alive for over a year and a half. <laughs> That's Big a moment. good story. Is that scary? That's not a scary story. No, no. It's a happy story. Uh, uh, well, I'm very interested for our, our spooky season themed episode that we're going to do. That's going to start yeah. with you being like, eh, uh, but I, I, oh, yeah, we will. No. 
I think we'll yeah. we'll we'll plunge the depths of the yeah. whys. Look, I the why I, not? I, I live with a witch. Like spooky season's giant in this house. Yeah. I'm a participant whether I want to be or not, but I, I do want to be. So cool. Spooky season you, yeah, you, is you, a you know, you, you punch a mask in in, a, in the Mall of America in 1992. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> uh, no, the Minnesota State Fair. Uh, I have a stand up bit about this, um, but uh, it wasn't during the actual spooky season, but it was in a haunted house. So the, so the Minnesota State Fair is a uh, it's not like a county fair. It's a massive thing. Uh, for people who live in the Midwest or anywhere where the, where the seasons are very intense, they probably relate. But in uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul, the Twin Cities, where I, I grew up, uh, summer comes and it's a huge explosion. And the Minnesota State Fair is massive. Uh, so I was there with some friends and a kind of girlfriend uh, that I wanted to impress. And they wanted to go to the haunted house. And I don't do well with haunted houses because I love uh, being scared, except for when people bleep and touch me. Then yeah. uh, it triggers the, the fight or flight response. Sure. So we were going through this haunted house and like flashes of light and things in the corner and spooky, but whatever. Uh, but but I, I was getting more and more tense and I didn't want to show it. Uh, and uh, there was a mummy suddenly behind some bars and that was ooh, spooky. Uh, but then the mummy reached out and grabbed my shoulder and it triggered my fight or flight response. And I, I did not choose flight um, because it's the Minnesota State Fair. The only weapon I had was a, a a bag of deep fried cheese curds. So it was totally <laughs> out of just instant reaction fear. I spun around and started hurling cheese curds at the mummy. <laughs> As you should. As you and should. then it was one of those crashing from the the fear to the reality. The yeah. probably 15 year old who'd been hired to play the mummy. <laughs> started saying, you can't throw cheese, man. No cheese throwing. Stop throwing the cheese. And I, it, it was so it was so shameful. And I kept throwing the yeah. cheese. Uh, it's and, a weapon. Uh, yeah. It was it was it was what I had. So I've been to like one haunted house uh, yeah. since then. I love spooky, but I have a hard time with it. Don't don't, don't touch me. Uh, you know, uh, I think yeah. anybody who grew up at all uh, in any of the stereotypes of young and nerdy where maybe you got physically bullied that. Yeah there's a trigger uh and yeah the the, <laughs> the mummy triggered me and he got cheese for his there efforts there's 8984m's pick that's my pick <laughs> for the deep fried cheese curds it worked it works now i think that's a good response i think that's what you should do yeah yep wonderful uh, all right. I think we're out of here. Unless you have any final question you want to answer, uh, Joseph. No, uh, pe people had so many wonderful questions. Yeah. This is just such a wonderful, uh, thriving evening of Other Center. Really appreciate it. Yeah, we really do. More on the way. And we will, of course, have updates as soon as we can about when we're returning to talk about that space saga we all love. But we need that SAG after strike to be wrapped up soon. And we're hoping for that. And uh, we'll keep you updated, like I said. All right, that's it. Don't forget, like we handled the, or like we said in the middle of the show here, you know, check out Joseph's short film uh, where you can look for details on his website. Go to my website for details on my comedy EP and uh, all that good stuff. That is it for now, my friends. We'll see you next time here on Other Center. Thanks for watching Four Center. To follow us on Twitter, reach out at Four Center Pod. We're on Hive Social at Four Center. On Instagram, we are at Four Center Pod. Our Facebook page is Four Center Podcast. The podcast is available in a lot of different spots like Acast, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and more. Just search, you'll find us. Want Four Center merch? Go to tpublic.com slash user slash Four Center. Want to support us directly? You can at patreon.com slash Four Center. For social links for the hosts and guests of Four Center, Check the links in the description below. That's it for now. We'll see you next time here on Force Center.